After you've captured the images with your camera, you're going to want to move them onto your local computer. So here you see a collection of images from a survey we did. And the images, as you can see, are alternating between a .raw and the .jpeg. And so this was the raw mode enabled on the camera. We're going to use a program called GeoSetter to sort the images. And GeoSetter is really helpful because it shows the GPS location of a particular image in your folder. And the reason we're going to do that is because the drone we used was a Phantom 4 from DJI. And there's no communication between the camera and the drone for triggering. So we were actually using the interval timer mode on the camera. And so what that does is it actually captures images on a built-in timer of the camera. And that also means that you've got images from takeoff, as you can see here from our launch pad, all the way back down to landing again. So here's the drone coming back down and some shots that were captured right at the end of the flight uh, looking at the gravel and whatnot. So what we want to do first is sort the images and only have the images remaining that are of our actual flight. And we're going to use GeoSetter to do that. After you've installed GeoSetter, go ahead and open the application. On the left here you can see the same folder that we were just looking at of our images. And on the right here we have a map showing the area that we surveyed and clicking on an image you will see the metadata on the image here and then you will also see the geolocation of that image. Now your window layout may look slightly different by default and you're welcome to organize it however you like. This is how we like to organize it. So on the left side here you see that the raw image itself when clicked on doesn't show a GPS location. That's because there is no metadata on the raw images. We actually save the metadata to the JPEG images and then in post-process after this, we will convert the raw to TIFF and copy the JPEG automatically to the converted TIFF. But for now, we're going to basically go through and quickly delete the images that we do not need. And you can choose to delete them and or move them to a separate folder. That is entirely up to you. So I'm going to try to find the first good JPEG. And by good, I mean the first JPEG that actually contains the calibration target because typically when you're doing a survey you're the first photo you're going to want to use especially for reflectance calibration is going to be the calibration photo now this is a good example where we didn't actually get the entire target so this image is no good to us so we're going to look at the images here notice that the raw is always followed by a jpeg so if the raw is 001 then the jpeg is 002 and those two are a pair so this raw is actually from this JPEG or this JPEG is from this RAW. So going down to 012, we see that that's the JPEG trailing the RAW pair of it. And so we're going to actually shift, click, and delete all those because the JPEG we want, the first one is this 014, and of course the 013 RAW that goes with it. So I'm just going to right click and delete. And then you can do a refresh here. So what that did is I've actually cut out the beginning images prior to the calibration photo. Now we're going to want to also do that to every photo after the calibration photo up to the location on our survey where we actually started capturing images that we want to actually stitch together. So the easiest way to do that is to actually click the blue arrow show image position on map button over here. So after clicking that, you can see that all the images geolocations were loaded onto this map. And you see our takeoff point here. So we're going to want to delete all the images that are from the takeoff point, not including, of course, the calibration photo that we just cropped and cut out too. We want to keep that one. But we want every photo after that all the way until the start of our survey deleted. And then the same goes, we want to also delete all the images that are at the end of our survey all the way down to the landing. OK, so over here we see that 014 is our calibration photo, so we want to keep that. Um, 016 is a little far away, so our software won't be able to detect the calibration photo, even though it's right there. Uh, it's no good to us. And of course, the 15, number 15 is the raw photo that pairs with the 16 photo. So we know that from number 15 to another number down here, we're not going to want. So going over to our start of the survey, we took off here, went all the way over to here, and here we are at the start of our survey. So we're going to click on an image in the first pass, uh, the first leg of the flight. Any of them will be fine. So 
So click on one of those. And you can see over here on the left that it jumped down to number 84. So that is number 84 right there. And you can see a preview here. If you go to 82, it looks like it tilted. So it was probably stopped and then started to go faster. And 80 looks like when it was turning from that direction from our landing. And you can see on the right side there. So we're coming from the landing, from the landing here. Pause, slows down, turns, turns, tilts, and then starts moving forward. So you want to crop out everything probably here. So 82 is going to be the first image that we do not want. Uh, you don't want to stitch these. You can technically stitch every image, uh, but it's not really necessary. And it will probably give you a little bit better stitch if you only have all the images at about the same altitude. So 82 and 81, which is the raw plus JPEG pair, uh, are the image is the first image that we want to delete. And we're going to go all the way up to the first image right after taking off that's not the calibration photo. And we're going to delete from 15 all the way to 82. Right click and delete. And then we're going to hit refresh. So basically what we have now is 014, which is our calibration photo, and then 84, which is the very first image in our survey. And if we click the blue dots with the green arrow here at the top again, you notice that we no longer have that string of images going from takeoff to the beginning of our survey. Now we'll want to do the same with the ending of our survey to the landing location. So again, we're going to click on an image close to the ending. And we're going to look at the images. That looks like where it turned, turned, and it's coming back. So I'm going to crop from here. Remember the raw that goes with it all the way down to the end. All the way down to looking at the gravel once it landed. OK. Now you should have an even number of images. See, 600 images. That means I have 300 with geodata, meaning 300 JPEGs, and 300 RAWs that are associated with it. If you have an odd number, that means you either have an extra RAW or an extra JPEG. Now, if you're in JPEG only mode, which is very common for our customers, then you won't have any RAW images to deal with, and you should very clearly see which images you want to keep and which you don't based on the geolocation. So again, we're going to add the images to the map here. And you can see that we don't have any images going from our takeoff to our beginning of our survey. And we don't have any images going from the end of our survey back to the landing. So these are all the images that we want to stitch with the exception of the calibration photo. Going back to the folder of images, you can see we now only have the calibration pair of images and then the remainder of our survey.